Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first thing, uh, we want to wish uh, Coach Christie and our uh, girls team, uh, women's basketball team, luck tonight. Uh, we'll be here to support them. Um, you know, she's been a great partner in terms of both programs working together for a common goal uh, on and off the court and in the community uh, with the type of uh, program and culture we're, we're trying to build. So we really wish them well tonight. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we're going to be here to support support them, and, um, and we'll be here all year long whenever our schedule permits um, to uh, hopefully uh, root them on the victory. So we're proud of the progress she's made with our program, and uh, she's, she's really a good coach, and uh, she's an unbelievable person. As, it, as far as it, uh, our team, we, we have a lot of work to do, okay? We're very fortunate to have won uh, the game against Memphis, all right? We, we are all obviously always trying to finish with one more point than our teammate, than our opponents. But in reviewing the video, okay, we're, we're, long, we're a long ways away from being a finished product. But the guys, they embraced the video. They embraced practice. On yesterday, we, we had a pretty hard practice. And uh, hopefully, we'll get some better carryover uh, into t today's practice. But we, we have a lot of work to do. But I'm happy that we were able to survive, especially after a lackluster first half. And we were able to make a little bit of a run in the second half. The, the entire team contributed to that win. and um, but. We, we still have some areas that we have to clean up, and that's my job to help them, uh, help them get there. Do you have an update on, on Riley and Armand and, and your injured guys and their status for this game? Yeah, so Riley's, Riley's making some progress. Um, he's going to start uh, practicing hopefully later on this week. And we'll see what his availability is um, either in Brooklyn or the game prior to Brooklyn. But uh, he's making some progress. He's moving around. He's, he's, um, he's involved in uh, a small portion of or will be involved in a small portion of the non-contact part of our practice today. And then we'll see how he progresses um, and recovers for Wednesday and Thursday's practices. But... He's, um, he's, he's ahead of schedule. We like where he is. Our mind um, uh, is not healing at the same rate. Uh, so, you know, he, he'll continue to be out, and, and we'll have another update on him next week. Coach, Dante had the big game on, on Friday, and it was Daniel last Monday who had the big game. How, what's it like having those two compete against each other, and how important is the post play for this team this year? Well, the first thing is we need them to compete together on the court without you know one of them getting in serious foul trouble but yeah they push each other in practice along with Galen and Alex Reese um, you know that's four big guys that we think we can count on and but Dante looked a little bit more like a mature player because you know the rest of the guys that we played were either four freshmen um, I still consider A.J. Jr. a sophomore, whatever his mom or the media says. Uh, he, he's a sophomore, uh, even though he's going to graduate next year because he didn't play that much in his first year in, you know, at another SEC school. Dejon Ingram is a sophomore. So, you know, Dante was like our most experienced guy out there on the floor. And, uh, you know, he had a big game for us. Those six blocks were huge. We needed every one of them. Avery, you're on the same thinking. Alex Reese, we haven't talked about a lot, but he's got great skill level. I thought he played quality minutes. Was that the design, or was that because of Daniel's foul trouble? And he played probably more than you expected. Yeah, a little bit more, but you're right, uh, Scott. He's very skilled. You, you're talking about a kid that's 6'9". You know, I got an update on his weight today. He's probably 252 today. Now, sometime that can fluctuate. But um, the kid moved well in the game. Uh, you know, he's a threat, obviously, from behind the three-point line. I like to see him post up a little bit more because he has a really nice post-up game. But, you know, he's got great hands. 
he can pass. You know, some of those outlet passes were like some of the passes Kevin Love makes, you know, at the next level. So uh, he's, he's going to continue to get better. Uh, you know, he was a major part of that freshman class. Uh, and, and obviously he doesn't get as much attention as some of the other guys, but he's important to us. Um, Coach, will you um, have the same starting lineup or – do you have anybody who recently became eligible who might enter the starting lineup? If, if I didn't respect you as much and you weren't such a veteran reporter, I would say next question. But I'm not going to do you that. So, yeah, Sexton will be in the lineup. Along those lines, I guess, what, what is the – what do you anticipate from him this first game, kind of getting back out there and, and getting into the, the groove again with the rest of his teammates? Well, I just think the main thing, Alex, is he can see by watching our first game that we have other guys on the team that can play. And we don't want anybody to feel like there's an enormous amount of pressure to be a one-man band and quote-unquote lead us to victory. Uh, it's a team game, and he, he, he knows a lot of the things that we've been preaching about finishing plays and fundamentals and taking care of the basketball and and uh, having a long longer uh, attention span to detail and focus on every play that that applies to everybody on the team across the board but specific to him we, we don't need a 40 or 50 point performance tomorrow to lead us to victory we have a team and he has a role within that team and we want him to just be himself, uh, but at the same time be excited. You know, um, you know he's playing in his first uh, regular season home game, uh, he, he, yeah, in first college basketball, true college basketball game. So we want him to be excited, but we, we don't need anybody on our team to think they have to, you know, have this out of world experience to help lead us to victory every time we we play a game. We, we think we've put together a really good team. Now, we're not functioning at a high level on every possession as a team, and those are some of the early season growing pains that's to be expected. You guys signed three players, uh, all from the South. Your roster, I think, has 12 or 14 players from the SEC region. Is that important to you to get players from this territory and uh, kind of build a roster around those players? Well, Ryan, I think it's got to be the right players that fit what you're trying to do and and we, you know we have a vision in terms of where we wanted to be here in year three but also you know years four and five and I think those players that are in our footprint that we think can have the right type of competitive spirit and function on, on our school on our campus in terms of you know their academics and kids that can recover from adversity and represent us well in the community and play well, hopefully at home and on the road, and hopefully one of these days, if we're fortunate to, to play in a tournament, you know, we want to, we want those kids that that are in our footprint to uh, be a part of our program. But, you know, we we played exhibition games in Canada for a reason, so we we think at some point our tentacles are going to spread more than our footprint, and we're prepared to do that. But all three of those kids. Um, um, you know, Jerry Butler and Fleming and Deontay Wood, you know, those kids are were important to us. We built relationships with them for quite a long time, and we were fortunate to be in position that uh, we got our names called. Avery, when you watched the, the first half against Memphis, you know, obviously you get whistled for 20 fouls. How much of that was, you know, schematic? I mean, how much of that was just kind of schematic defensive miscues? How much of that was just the way the game was being called? And, and what's your message to your team after, you know, committing that many fouls and a half? Well, that was a poorly coached team. It looked like we had never gone through a defensive drill in our life, okay? So, again, um, we have to do a better job at fundamentals, teaching it, teaching it uh, getting in the stance, having a stronger accountability model, because that type of defense does not travel well. It, it's not going to work at home against anybody on our schedule this year. Uh, we were out of position, not enough communication. Uh, we weren't alert. Um, we didn't get enough loose balls. We didn't understand uh, the scouting report. 
you know, when we pass out these scouting reports and we go over all these players, it's for a reason. It's not just to have, you know, the the, fa the uh, copy machine producing papers, okay? But a lot of our young guys have never been through this type of discipline before. And I think as time wears on, they're going to appreciate the preparation and all of the things that we talk about in practice. It really matters. And Kind of on that note, uh, Herbert, when we talked to him, he really stressed the importance of defense, and it, it, he kind of had a defensive first mentality. How refreshing is that to have, from a freshman, to have that personality? And who did you talk to? Excuse Herbert. Me? He's oh. going by Herbert now, not Herb. Uh, not <laughs> Good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Herbert, um, Herbert's correct. You know, that defensive mentality and being in the right place at the right time is important. Um, you know, there were stretches where he had some really good moments on defense where he really didn't look like a freshman. And there, then there were times all of our freshmen looked like freshmen. Uh, but th there's a big point of emphasis on playing defense without fouling, m you know, moving our feet better. And we're capable of doing it. Uh, we, we're capable of being a different type of defensive team than we were last year, a lot faster and longer. But uh, we cannot put ourselves in the bind by having five fouls in the first three or four minutes and fouling with one second on the shot clock. That, that's a lack of discipline, and that's on me. I, we have to do a better job in those situations of teaching. Avery, uh, it's been a whirlwind for Colin, obviously, with, throughout this process. How has he dealt with it emotionally, and do you think he could use it as motivation this season? I think you can use it as motivation in the right way as long as it doesn't uh, relate to self, but when it relates, when it has more to do with the team. And I think that's what he's all about. Not, not many student athletes can go through all that he's going through because I, I know everything he's been through behind the scenes and uh, still have that type of attitude where it's all about the team. Look at him during our games, whether it's the exhibition game or the game against Memphis at the Naval Academy. He's alert. He's in the huddles. He's encouraging his teammates. That's not just putting on the show because somebody may see it on social media. He'll never see it on social media because he has yet to have a Twitter handle. But um, I'm really proud of him, how he's matured in the sense of appreciation of having an opportunity to put on that Alabama uh, uniform on tomorrow night. Even though you said you guys have some growing pains uh, against Memphis, how much confidence did it give you in y'all's depth that you were able to beat a program like the Tigers uh, with four players missing? Yeah, again, that's one of the things we talked about. We think we have quality depth, but we have to be better in terms of not having as many wasted possessions on offense. At the end of the game, we look like um, you know, we looked like the bad news bears throwing the ball all around the floor, right? We didn't, we didn't look good at all. And we didn't finish the game well uh, with some of our turnovers and lack of transition defense. But, it, but all of those moments are great teachable moments. You know, our guys are coachable. And, you know, there are different voices, okay, that I have in practice. Sometimes I have my teaching voice, um, my loving voice, uh, my disappointing voice, my intense voice. Uh, my mentoring voice, coaching voice, you know, it's a lot of different voices. And they, they accept me and they accept our staff when we're a little animated or when we call them, doesn't matter because they, they, these kids are made of the right stuff. They just need more experience and more time. And uh, so we can look like a real, you know, one day elite college basketball team. And there were a lot of minutes in this first game where we didn't look like that. And, uh, but they, they, they'll embrace it, and we'll get better from it and learn from it. So uh, in that first game, Dazon carried you guys offensively in that first half and was aggressive throughout. You talk to him about being more aggressive, or you just kind of let him do his own thing? We talk about it uh, because there are times, especially in, in his brief sophomore year, where he wasn't aggressive. Um, he, he needs to be more aggressive. But also willing to change speeds. We talk, talk to Dejon a lot about changing speeds and changing gears. Such a big, strong, powerful guy when he gets downhill uh, going to the basket. But the great thing I like about him is he, he's willing to take open three-point shots now. 
and he takes them with confidence. I was proud of him, uh, you know, getting to the free throw line as much as he got to the free throw line. And sure, all of them didn't go in, but he didn't get discouraged about a miss, maybe like he did in his freshman year. I think that's a sign of maturity. So he was 11, 15 from the line, and uh, we needed all 11 of those free throws. And um, I, I, I think we can constantly talk to him about stay aggressive, you know, we, we like when you're aggressive. We don't, we don't want you to be passive, and he's embraced that role. Okay, thanks.